We found ourselves in the middle of all of it yeah. when Coach Ryan Day immediately afterwards said, I, wa I wonder where Lou Holtz is. Huh. And like, I wonder if Lou Holtz is wondering the same thing. Joining us now, one of the Lou's that was a part of the Lou, two Lou conversation that got brought up by Ryan Day immediately after the win. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Lou Holtz. Yeah, hey, Coach. Oh. <laughs> hey, thank you very much for having me back, Pat. Um, first and foremost, listen, I don't know what the fuck happened. Okay, <laughs> I'm there at the start of the game. I'm with a lot of my former players, who just got a lot of sweet boys who, who wanted to see Coach Lou. I wanted to see them as well. I watched the first half, Notre Dame. You know, they, they played pretty well. I mean, they hung in. And then I did what I always do. I flipped the channel over. I watched a little bit of Matlock, and I went to bed. <laughs> that's what I do every single night. It's kind of my routine. I love that Andy Griffith, but that's beside the point. I wake up on Saturday morning, and I see Ryan Day taking fucking shots at good old sweet Coach Lou. It's bullshit. I mean, you go go back watch the game. Was I wrong? What did I say? I said they get out physical. I what? said they get beat by Alabama what? and Georgia what? and Michigan twice. What? And Ryan Day's acting like some goddamn world beater. <laughs> it took him the entire fucking game. Five seconds left. To, to, to beat Notre Dame, okay? And they did it with Notre Dame. Had 10 guys on the field, two fucking plays in a row. Okay, so he could take his victory dancing. Oh, I wonder where Coach Lou Holt is. Hey, listen, Ryan, I might not always know where I'm at, but guess what? People do know where I'm at at all times. I ain't fucking hard to find, pal. So if you want to come talk your shit and say anything and sit down with me, you come find me, okay? I'll be standing here right on Library Lawn in front of Touchdown Jesus. We can talk about things. But don't act like I'm some dipshit, okay? Like I'm some moron. Listen, I know Coach Lou's old, okay? But guess what? Coach Lou can still read, okay? I was on Twitter the following morning, and guess what? Ohio State fans were talking that sweet shit all night long, saying, hey, this Ryan Day's a big, dumb dipshit. This guy doesn't know how to call a football game, okay? They were ready to fire your ass 30 minutes into that fucking game, okay? You're lucky you won, son. You're lucky you won. And at the end of the day, Pat, AJ, all you guys know, if he doesn't beat Michigan, it doesn't fucking matter. Ohio State fans expect them to beat Notre Dame, okay? It's a much bigger game for Notre Dame than it was for Ohio State. But I just, I mean, Jesus Christ, I'm 86 years old. You want to pick a fucking fight with me? <laughs> I was sleeping, for Christ's sake. Just let me be, okay? But if you want beef, <laughs> Come find me, okay? Because I got beef all night long like Fogo de Cow. All you can eat, Ryan. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks, Coach. Anything else, Coach? Thanks, guys. Yeah, no, because I'm fine. They're going to be just fine, okay? <laughs> Sam Hartman still, I don't think his, his jersey, you know, it, it wasn't that dirty. I said that was going to happen. Uh, you, you look back at it. Feel perfect. <laughs> Basically, every <laughs> shut your fucking mouth, AJ. <laughs> Show a little respect, will you? Okay. Basically, everything I said came true. So yeah, Coach Lou may be getting low, but I think he still knows a thing or two about football. Go Irish and Ryan Day. Like I said, hey, hey you you want to throw hands, buddy? Come find me. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thank, thank you, Coach. Coach. Love you, Coach. Oh, man. He's right. <laughs> Lou's fired up. He's still over there. <laughs> I got beef like Fogo to Chow. <laughs> All night. All night. <laughs> if you want it. I don't know where I am, but people know where I am. Always. <laughs> Man. Oh, I'm happy we got an answer. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Yeah. I'm glad he still got the juice. For I didn't know if day. he was going to go quietly into the night. Yeah. You know, it turns out he did not. How dare Coach Lou try to fire up Notre Dame on Friday and say things? Okay, so let's talk about it. Coach Lou Holtz. Pissed off Ryan Day. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Lee Corso <laughs> pissed off Ooh. head coach of Washington State and Ryan Leaf. That's 174 years of age, those two combined. Yes. Still got their fastball. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Still got their fastball. Paint in the black. They got Ryan Day's first thing is like, where's that old bastard at? <laughs> yeah, right away. Know? And then the Washington State coach is like, Lee Corso's talking shit? <laughs> He's saying, I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, holy shit. Coach Corso, what? What did he say? And then he listened to it back. Coach Corso said, oh, then nobody wants us, Bull, because they're the pack, too. It's like, yeah. I don't think that's 
I don't think that's too out of pocket. Pretty true. I don't think it's too out of pocket. But anything used to motivate a team, I appreciate, I respect, I understand. And like I said earlier, as soon as I saw Ryan Day lose his mind, oh. I said, I love Ryan Day. Yeah. I love that he took that little bit. That's like the Michael Jordan thing. You know what I mean? Just the Utah coach comes in and says, hope you have a great meal. And Michael Jordan's like, ah, <laughs> Is that what you hope? Okay. And gets mad and goes and kills. I like that Ryan Day was able to do that. And welcome back from your poop tie. Thank you. Welcome back, back you. from your poop tie. That was a quick one. That was pretty good. You know, nothing crazy going on with the tummy today. So just, uh, hey, sometimes when duty calls, you got to go. Yep. Yeah, I concur. And I'm happy you're back. You missed a great conversation. Coach Lou Holtz joined us. Oh, so, God damn it. Yeah, that would have been nice. He's one of your favorites. But yeah. I love whenever coaches utilize anything to motivate the boys, especially if it works. And for Washington State, it worked. For Ohio State, it worked. And for Oregon, it worked. Yes. Ooh. When Dan Lanning was like, this ain't for clicks. This is for wins. Yep. They Game isn't played in Hollywood. It's played on the grass. It's like, and then they released that video, which I personally don't uh, love, unless Coach Lanning wanted that out, which a lot of people are saying he, he was like. He had to then, right? He had to be okay with them putting it out, right? Hmm. There's no way they just release your pregame well, he obviously knew he was being filmed, but yeah. I would I would assume they asked the head coach before they put that out. You would assume, right? Yeah, so he wanted that out. Yes. Yeah. Which is wild. It's even cooler, yeah. on, honestly. It's almost like, yeah, no, I, I don't want to just say this to my team. I want mm -hmm. everyone to know this is how we operate in here, and we don't give a shit. Here's Coach Lanning talking to the Oregon Ducks right before their Colorado game this past weekend where they won by 42 to 6. Yeah. 36 points. Whew. Damn. In a, quite an amazing environment, Oregon. Here's Coach Dan Lanning talking to Bo Nix in his sixth year in a veteran crew that has five stars all over the place. Rooted in substance, not flash. Rooted in substance. Today, we talk with our pads. You talk with your helmet, right? Every moment. The Cinderella story is over, man. Right? They're fighting for clicks. We're fighting for wins. There's a difference. Right? There's a difference. Right? This game ain't going to be played in Hollywood. It's going to be played on the grass. Right? It's going to be played on the grass. Let's go. I mean, you hear the boys while he's talking going, yup, mm -hmm. yup. You could tell that was his messaging all week because as a Pac-12 powerhouse they are. Yeah. The conversation has just been about Colorado. Yep. They've trying to been building up the Bo uh, Nix Heisman thing and they're not even getting talked about at all dan pulled for that uh pulled from that obviously it worked for him yeah what are your thoughts on it darius don't don't have a problem with it at all i saw a lot of people you know bitching and moaning about it uh, and they just you know have been i guess privy to a bunch of pregame speeches i also didn't mind the uh, him releasing it or them releasing it or whatever because the timing of it you know it was it came out while the game was already going it's not like he gave this speech on friday or thursday for it to give the other team bulletin board material coaches they're going to use all type of shit to get their teams ready to go and if he felt like this was the right thing to do i mean obviously he had the team to go out there and back it up and get the boys you know fired up but um they went out there they whooped their ass you know 36 like point that. win absolute dismantling and now colorado has usc we're going to find out colorado's jib yeah right you know what I mean? We're going to find it out. It's a gauntlet for them, huh? Things really, were Oregon's good, man. Oregon was flying around. They were fast, they were physical yeah. like you yeah, they from from the jump they were on it. And they had an edge to them the entire time, which I appreciate, which comes from I believe the way coach Lanning set the table and the tone all week against this Colorado team that's getting all the headlines that I assume they believe they should be yep. getting over there in the Pac-12. And for anyone pissed, like he said at halftime like hey, we're just getting started. Like they they could have beat them, you know. They, they could have beat him by up, 80 if they wanted to. Like, he mm -hmm. he really could have stepped on the gas and been like, hey, let's fucking embarrass these guys. And they did. Fake, a, a fake punt they ran. They went for it for two a couple of times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He also told in one of his interviews, he said, I hope all those people that have been watching are watching right now. Yeah. Bingo. Just kind of like a message. Like, I, I feel like he was speaking for a lot of people. I, I think Uncle uh, Unc on uh, Shannon talked about this on first take. He was like, if you read the reaction on the internet to this Dan Lanning clip, it's almost like he was talking for a lot of people who are like, yeah, mm -hmm. he speak, yeah, I agree, yeah. Like a lot of people wanted to see this Colorado team fail. That's how a lot of things are going to be there at the top. I mean, that's basically everything oh, yeah. that is happening in the world. There is as many people rooting for as there is against, and you always got to kind of weigh that. But he was speaking for a lot of people, I think, is how people took that. And then whenever they go out and win, I think Lanning won over a uh, – a lot of human yeah. beings uh, around college football with how he handled the entire thing. Yeah.